In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a budget-friendly live streaming setup for churches. Here on this diagram, we have the big picture of what needs to happen for your typical church to be able to broadcast worship online. On the left side of the diagram, we need to capture three things. We need to capture video, live action video of whoever is preaching, leading worship, etc. Next, we need to capture our presentation software. So if you are displaying lyrics for worship songs or if your pastor has sermon slides, they need to display in the stream. We wanna make sure we have the right software in place for that. And then finally, we wanna capture audio. This is to make sure that your audience can hear whoever is preaching, whoever is singing or speaking during your online broadcast. Once we have the infrastructure in place for capturing video, our presentation, as well as audio, we are gonna send those audio and video signals into our streaming software, which is gonna be running on a computer. Our streaming software is going to combine our video and audio and presentation together into one final program feed. When I say program feed, that is the final video that your audience will be viewing online. Once that final program feed is created, it then needs to be distributed to a content delivery network so that it can be viewed on Facebook or YouTube or other social channels. Then you as a church leader are gonna be able to reach as many people as possible and you're gonna be able to engage with your church online. So that is the big picture. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, helping you lead gospel-centered and tech-savvy worship. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos pertaining to live streaming for worship. So the first thing you need to do with your live streaming setup is slap that like button on this video because I'm going to save you a ton of time when it comes to finding the right gear and software to put in place for your worship ministry. But that'll only happen if you slap that like button. So in the rest of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an overview of all of these things we just covered in the big picture. We're gonna dive into this in greater detail so you have crystal clear direction on where to go next to get the right pieces in place for your live streaming setup. And it's important for me to state this caveat. When I say budget-friendly setup for churches, I mean less than a couple thousand dollars. Fortunately, most churches already have in place a computer that they're already using to display media and worship. You probably already have a sound console and lots of great audio gear to capture audio. Um, you probably already have software like ProPresenter for presentation. So some of the pieces you may be missing are the camera, a video capture device, your live streaming software, and then a multi-streaming platform. And I'm going to cover all of those things in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in, starting with video capture. Video cameras vary widely when it comes to their price points as well as quality. You can get started with a simple $200 camcorder like I have here, or you could pay $2,000 for the camera setup that you're actually seeing me film this video on right now. But what I think is gonna be most helpful for you is if I compare the image quality of these various camera options, starting from the least expensive to the most expensive. Well, at least the most expensive that I have on hand in this studio. Before I compare these cameras, I also want to back up and kind of show you the two different routes you can go here um, when it pertains to how you connect your camera to your computer running your streaming software. For any camera out there that has an HD DMI output on it, you're gonna need some sort of video capture device. I have the Black Magic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. It goes from HDMI or SDI into a this little box right here, and then it goes to Thunderbolt into my laptop. So then when I pull out open my streaming software, it's gonna be able to capture that video signal uh, like you see here. So right now on my screen, this video feed that you're seeing is from my Panasonic GH5. It's going HDMI out into my Ultra Studio Mini Recorder into Thunderbolt into Ecamm Live, my streaming software. So if you have an HDMI out camera, make sure you get a video capture device. We are gonna list all of our recommended video capture devices below this video. Another route you can go is you can get a camera that connects to your computer via USB and sends the video signal that way. That is what the PTZ Optics USB camera does that I have here. It's this white camera. This is what you see in Ecamm Live right now. Um, and I just have a USB cable plugged into my computer and plugged into the camera and that's it. I don't need an additional video capture device. So now let's talk about the various price point options for different cameras you can use for live streaming and we'll compare the image quality. So first, I wanna start with this Canon camcorder. So here is the footage coming from the Canon Vixia HF 800 camcorder. This was just over $200. I picked it up from Best Buy. And as you can see, it's not 
too bad. It's not the most amazing uh, camera footage that you've also seen. I actually even think the cameras on the new iPhones uh, or new you know, Samsung phones look better than the footage that's coming out of this right now. Um, usually the marks of a cheaper camera is that you don't have very good dynamic range. Usually the, um, the bright parts of the picture are just blown out white and then the dark parts of the picture are just like pitch black and you just really aren't seeing the detail and the highlights and the shadows and you can see that quite obviously with this camera, especially when we compare it to another camera, which now I wanna compare it to, to the PTZ Optics USB camera. I'll select that here. And now you can tell this camera image quality is, is definitely quite a bit better. Of course though, there's a price difference. You know, this PTZ Optics camera is almost $2,000 and then this camcorder is only $200. So very significant price increase there, but you're getting lots of convenience with the USB cable uh, that can plug straight into your camera. Plus the PTZ optics camera can actually do pan, tilt and zooming. That's what PTZ stands for. And that can come in handy, especially if you just want a camera that you're gonna mount permanently somewhere in your worship space and you want that ability uh, to be able to zoom in and out. And what's cool is this camera has autofocus built into it. I wouldn't say it's like amazing like Canon autofocus, but it works pretty well. And then of course this camcorder has autofocus built into it too. And you know, you can obviously pan and tilt your tripod, you can zoom in and out, but that all has to be done manually at the camera. You can't just use a remote like this one. And then finally, we have what I consider the, the more expensive options. So what you're watching me on right now is a Panasonic GH5 camera with a 15 millimeter prime lens. The, the whole setup together is around $2,000. You could probably find some use options for even less, but there's lots of great mirrorless cameras out there. You got the Panasonic GH5, you've got the Canon uh, EOS R, you've got the mirrorless cameras by Sony, as well as the Blackmagic Design Pocket cinema cameras, so many options out there for camera bodies that are in that like $2,000 price range. And then you can get a bunch of different lenses uh, for those cameras, um, depending on the type of look that you're going for. But of course, you're gonna be paying a lot more for those setups when you compare it to a camcorder or these PTZ optics cameras. But the upside of those more expensive setups is that when you're using these nicer, bigger sensors and nicer lenses, the image quality is gonna be significantly better. The other thing though to keep in mind is generally the more money you spend on a camera, uh, the less user friendly it's going to be because you know they're designing these like prosumer cameras or professional cameras for people who understand exposure and lens optics and all that fancy stuff. But when you get like a PTZ optics camera, it's, it's very much, you know, automatic the way it's set up. I do recommend, however, you know, if you get the PTZ optics camera, you're gonna wanna make sure you go into the menu settings. You can do this on your remote and then dial in the exposure. Um, I'm not a huge fan of their auto exposure settings here, um, but as you can see, you know, I was able to go in and dial a pretty good um, image quality because I can go back to um, the image settings right here and then I can adjust things like, you know, sharpness, contrast, and I'll, let me just show you, like if I turn contrast all the way down and I turn like luminance up, you know, it just looks very, very flat and, and not very appealing. So I'll turn luminance back down, I'll turn contrast back up, um, and that just kind of gives it a better look. So you could kind of spend time dialing in these settings to make it look appropriate. But when it comes to user friendliness, in conclusion, you know, these cameras tend to be more user friendly, the camcorder or the PTZ optics cameras versus a more professional mirrorless camera setup. So that covers most everything you need to know about a camera setup. Just make sure if you get something that's gonna be HDMI out, you do get a video capture device, um, but you can also get a camera that just has USB and you'll be good to go from there to get that signal from your camera to the laptop. Next, let's talk about presentation software. This is a quick one. I recommend either ProPresenter or Easy Worship. They both have NDI out. And when it comes to having the most affordable live stream setup, especially if you wanna run it all on one computer, having an NDI output from your presentation software is gonna make it so simple. So here I have ProPresenter open on my computer and I have a slide here with some lower thirds lyrics. And then I also just have uh, an image of a cute little puppy running around. Back to just the lyrics slide though and I'll remove uh, the puppy for now. Uh, what's cool is in ProPresenter I can go to screens and then I can configure screens and I created an NDI screen and then I turned on the alpha key for that screen. So basically it's sending out this virtual 
video output from ProPresenter that shows just the lyrics with a transparent background and then automatically without having to do anything in my fancy in my streaming software it was able to go ahead and detect this ProPresenter lyrics input and I don't have a licensed version of ProPresenter here that's why you see the watermark but you can see the lyrics showing up there and of course if I went ahead and you know clicked on a little picture of a dog that automatically will be sent into Ecamm live as well so what's really nifty about this ProPresenter NDI out is that you know if you have full screen presentations that you have to display like your pastor's sermon slides you know here I have the puppy dog representing that you know that will be sent to Ecamm like you see here or if we're just wanting to see the lyrics you can send over just the lower th third lyrics um, like you see right here so if you're looking for a very quick simple live streaming setup to be able to add in lower thirds lyrics over NDI I highly recommend ProPresenter and then Easy Worship also has that feature as well up next we have audio capture. Fortunately, your church probably already has a mixing console. If you have a digital mixing console like the X32 by Behringer and Alan Heath console, all these digital mixing consoles are practically large audio interfaces, which means you can send your mixed audio from that mixing console into your streaming software. You can make some adjustments to make sure the audio is synced properly. It takes just a few seconds to do, and then you're going to be good to go. You can just mix your band, you can mix your pass or whoever in the streaming software from your mixing console, and that's all you really have to do for audio. You probably already have all the microphones and other pieces of gear on hand to capture that great sounding audio. But let's say if you have an analog sound console. In that case, you're gonna need a audio interface. So here is an audio interface. It's this device that is gonna be able to take an audio signal into the front of it here via XLR or a quarter inch cable. And then out of the back, there's a USB port and that's gonna connect it to your computer. So if you have an analog mixing console and you just have some like auxiliary outputs, you're gonna wanna just pull a feed from one of your aux outs on that mixing console using a quarter inch cable and you're going to connect it to your, your uh, audio interface and then you're going to connect that to your computer and then when you open up your streaming software it's going to detect that audio and you'll be ready to go. So those are the pieces you're going to have to have in place in order to capture high quality audio. Now let's move on to the next step of the big picture here. Let's talk about the computer that's actually running our streaming software and that we have all of our devices connected to and it's also worth mentioning I'm assuming in this case that ProPresenter is running on the same computer as your streaming software. If if ProPresenter was running on a different computer, you could actually just connect those two computers on a local area network via Ethernet, and the NDI video feed from ProPresenter will automatically show up either in Ecamm Live or vMix, depending on uh, which streaming software you use. But you know, if you want to be as simple as possible, run the applications on the same computer, and they will just work. That NDI signal will just show up. So generally speaking, when it comes to the specs of your computer, Make sure it is a more powerful computer, ideally like a quad core Intel processor, ideally more than eight gigabytes of RAM, maybe closer to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, you just wanna make sure you have the processing power in place for your computer to you know, process th that one video feed as well as your presentation software, NDI feed, um, and combine that with audio. Uh, when you're doing live streaming or any work with vid video on a computer, it's generally a more processor intensive activity. So so don't expect to have great performance if you only have like you know four gigs of RAM and you know a dual core processor it'll work but you'll probably have some stuttering in the video and it's just not going to be as smooth as it could be and that's especially going to be true if you try adding one or two more cameras to this setup uh, it's just going to really take a toll on your computer's processing and that's when you're going to want to explore getting a separate video switcher and that's going to be kind of a higher end setup. But back to our simple one camera setup here, the best streaming software I recommend for Mac is Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live is my favorite streaming software because it's a great price, it's extremely low for all the features you get, um, and then it's just very intuitive and easy to use. So you can check out Ecamm Live, I'll put a link to Ecamm Live below this video. It is an affiliate 
affiliate link, and I only use affiliate links for products that I truly believe in. So if you do purchase Ecamm Live, Churchfront does get a little bit of a cut of that, which is great to support the channel and stuff. But Ecamm Live, if you are a Mac user, I highly, highly recommend it um, if you're going for this simple live streaming setup for your church. If you are a Windows or a PC user, I recommend checking out vMix is a great streaming software. Um, you can have, with their basic version, you can have up to four inputs. Um, you, you can also have NDI inputs, so the whole presentation, Lower Thirds Lyrics um, setup will work just fine. So definitely check out vMix if you are a PC user. It's also worth mentioning, there's a software called OBS Studio. It is a open broadcaster software. It is free. It runs on Windows, Macs, and Linux. I'm personally not a fan of the user interface and getting up and running with OBS. It works. I know a lot of people use it, like it, and love it. It's just not my favorite option of these three options that I presented to you. So that covers all of the streaming software options for your computer. It's also worth mentioning, you may want to have on your computer some video editing software, especially if you are doing a simulated live service where you capture your sermon and your music ahead of time, you kind of edit it down, you create one final video, and then you broadcast it through your streaming software on Sunday morning. You're gonna want software like iMovie or Final Cut or Premiere Pro, uh, DaVinci Resolve is a free option. Any one of these pieces of editing software are gonna allow you to basically alter um, any video that you capture and create that final program feed video that you're gonna produce for your audience. And finally, this brings us to the last step of the big picture, and this is the multi-streaming platform. My recommendation for a multi-streaming platform is Restream.io. So here I have my Restream account open, um, and this is the account we use for our church to broadcast on Sunday. And what Restream allows us to do is it sends a feed to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. And it integrates seamlessly with our streaming software, Ecamm Live. So you'll see right here, uh, my destination for my stream is Restream.io. Um, so rather than having to just pick one of these platforms like Facebook or YouTube, it goes to Restream, and then what happens is Restream encodes that video, and then it will send it to both Facebook and YouTube. And we've had very flawless viewing experiences so far using Restream for multiple weeks in a row. And then what's cool is it gives you all these analytics that you can look at from your streams. So this was our stream from last Sunday. We had about an average of like almost 50 people on, and we can see about 30 people were on our Facebook account, and then 16 people were on the YouTube account. And then Restream's got some great chat features as well where you can like chat with people from both platforms within just Restream. So for its price, it's about 20 bucks a month. It's just a very powerful piece of software when it comes to that, that final step of your live stream and, and getting it out to the world to these various platforms. And that's it. That is the complete setup. And I hope now you just have a ton more clarity about the different pieces you're gonna have to put in place to build a live streaming setup for your church. And of course, with each of these steps, we can go way deeper into the details of you know how to get your camera configured, which one you should get, how to set up your streaming software, uh, get that all up and running, how to just have the right overall strategy for doing church online. And that's why I created the Beginner's Guide to Live Streaming for Churches online course. We're gonna link that online course below this video. We have multiple hours of video lessons, kind of similar to this, but what we do is we, we take our time and walk through each single step of this process. And I'll actually just go ahead and pull up the course page here and show you what we cover inside. Um, so, of course, the first few lessons are kind of introductory material. Um, we're going to be able to walk through, you know, just the basics of making sure you have live streaming and copyright covered, that you understand what type of licensing you'll need to get. We talk about just online church strategies, like is it good to do a true live stream, um, or should you be doing a simulated live stream, or should you just record and publish later? Uh, we then go deep into the gear overview side of things and the different pieces you'll need. I walk you through the camera setup, um, getting everything up and running uh, with video capture. Then I talk about audio setup. I go deep into like how to configure di your digital mixing console.
console to send the right mix to your streaming software. Then we go deep into setting up presentation software like ProPresenter. So I walk you through how to configure your screens, uh, how to create those NDI outputs, how to make it so you have the right looks set on those screens so that it displays lower thirds lyrics to your stream while it still displays regular lyrics and backgrounds to your main display that your congregation would be watching in the service. And then I have detailed step-by-step -step guides on how to get up and running with Ecamm Live for Mac users and then also uh, a detailed guide for Windows users who are going to be running vMix. Then I walk you through click by click how to get up and running with the restreaming software and then I'm going to show you our simulated live stream workflow, how at Mission Lakewood what we're doing to capture high quality worship content and sermon content. We edit it together but then we still do a live stream on Sunday using a lot of the tools I showed you here um, and what's awesome is the quality of our broadcast is, is really high quality but we're not having to stress out about you know doing the, the actual content creation live in the moment. I highly recommend this workflow for most churches and we dive deep into that into this course. And that's it. That's the beginner's guide to live streaming for churches. You can definitely go ahead and check that out. We'll put the link down below this video. We'd love to see you in the course and we also have some options to add some coaching onto that too. So if you want real-time help and support from our team when it comes to navigating, setting up live streaming for your church, we'll We'll be there to help you out. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends in worship ministry. And don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your church.